my troubles are all the same. You want to be where everybody knows your name. You want to go where people go. People are all the same. You want to go where everybody knows your name. Climbing the walls when no one calls, you lost the sail again. heard from uh, the Artesia Park ukulele class, Miss uh, Susan McCormick, please don't leave, we want to say thank you for, for uh, having that great performance. And I especially loved how you tailored the words to the city of Artesia, so thank you so much. So good afternoon, everyone. It is wonderful to see our community room full. I am Mayor Melissa Ramoso, and welcome to the 2022 State of, oh, State of the City Address. Thank you for being here to learn about our city's recent accomplishments. I believe a city is only as great as the community members make it. Through your involvement, you played an important part in making so many positive things happen in our city over the last year. I thank you for making Artesia a fantastic community to live in, a city where businesses can succeed and a place that others want to visit. Before I begin, I want to say stick around till after the address because we have some special giveaways for all of you. And if you actually turn it to the back, it says City of Artesia. These are the first times we have giveaways. I want everyone to take one and we're gonna take a photo. <laughs> so stick around for that. But before we begin, I want to thank our event sponsors of Southern California Edison, uh, for being our main sponsor today, and also the Artesia Chamber of Commerce. So please give them out. And I also want to acknowledge my colleagues on the City Council who take the roles very seriously in ensuring our actions lead to enhancing the quality of life for our residents and those who do business in Artesia. So thank you, and please give a round of applause to Madam Mayor Pro Tem, Monica Manala, who's getting her food back there. <laughs> Council Member Tony Lima. Yay. Council Member Renee Trevino. And an honorable mention to Council Member Ali Taj, who's in Kansas City right now, representing the city of Artesia. Oh. A big thank you to the city staff who work hard every day to make this community great. Please can you stand up and everyone give a round of applause to the staff. because I always thought it was awkward when people wait to applause, but I'm so happy that everyone is here. So uh, uh, applause as you please, applaud as you please when you hear their names. Um, here today, we have from the office, office of Senator Dianne Feinstein, Jeanette Christian. <laughs> from the office of California State Treasurer, Fiona Ma, Commissioner Gloria Polito. From the Office of Council, uh, Congresswoman Linda Sanchez Jacob Wolf. I don't know if he's here yet, but from the Office of Assemblymember Christina Garcia Edgar Estrada. Oh, there you are. <laughs> and from the Office of Supervisor Janice Hahn, Lord Yoko Nisa. I just want to say it's a 
a very meaningful to have the, the various offices here because Congresswoman Linda Sanchez, Senator Bob Archuleta, um, and even Chris, uh, Assemblymember Christina Garcia's office will not be representing Artesia, so it means so much that you have come to the state of the city. Uh, it's probably one of your last events, so thank you for being here. Um, also, other representatives from the county, such as Los Angeles County Sheriff Captain Don Hol Dan Hogan, and our very own Sergeant, uh, Sergeant Ramos. Yay. Our Los Angeles County Fire Department Assistant Fire Chief Jacob Robertson. Favorites, Los Angeles County Fire Department staff, LaFonda Riggins. Yay. And we also have um, Los Angeles County Fire Department staff, Esther Marquez. Yay. And we do have um, a representative from the ABC Unified School District, Scott Smith. And we do have from the city of Cerritos, Assistant City Manager, Tori Contreras. I don't see Council Member Linda Johnson, but she was uh, supposed to come as well. Um, from the city of Artesia, um, we have Beautification and Maintenance Commissioner, Dan Rocha. And our Planning Commissioner, Karen McCullin, was supposed to be here as well. Uh, but uh, also, wanted another shout out to the Archita Chamber of Commerce, um, their table, and Chamber President Frank Phillips Spiritu, and the Board of Directors. <laughs> and, you know, we, I don't know I had the staff stand up with it all together. I do want to recognize the finding because that's very important. Um, here today, we do have our city manager, Aldo Schindler. <laughs> Our past interim city manager, Mike Egan. <laughs> Deputy city manager, Melissa Burke. <laughs> Community <laughs> development director, Okina Dorr. stuff, everything that's been happening in the city. Um, each of you may have received our annual report. We, re we released it about a month and a half ago. Um, you can find it at your table or at the front. Um, so we'll do some highlights this, this afternoon. Um, one of the biggest highlights that wasn't included is we'll start off with our new city manager. I am happy to now share with you the exciting progress we have made over the last year. As the pandemic evolved, I think we can agree that we all felt like 2021 began on a much better note, and you can ask the staff that. The city wanted to maintain that positive momentum 
and work hard to achieve successes across several key areas, which I will share with you. One of our most important ones was embarking on the search for the very important post of city manager. I'm happy to report that after a long process, we have a new city manager. The city council selected Mr. Aldo Schindler to fill the position. His first day on the job was on Tuesday. So Aldo, I know this is the third time you're probably going to stand up. So please stand up and let's give us another round of applause. over 28 years of experience in local government and stood out among other candidates for his strong background in community and economic development and ability to demonstrate that he will put our city and employees first. We are excited to have him on board and look forward to working together to build a greater and better Artesia. And we wouldn't have gone to this point the last 10 months without the leadership of our interim city manager, Mike Egan. I would like to thank Mike for all his hard work since he joined us in January and for helping with this transition. Mike, also please stand up. Thank you, Mike, for coming back for this event. I promised you there was good <laughs> And to our staff, I said it time and time again, we are nothing without our staff. I think this is the first time in a long time that in a state of the city address that we talked about our staff and the people who made our city great. So in addition to our new city manager, the first we have promoted 10 employees to fill vacancies and new positions. This includes four promotions to department head positions, four promotions to management, two of which were promoted from a rank and file position, and two promotions to a higher rank and file position. We also hired 10 employees to fill vacancies, which includes one department head position, one management position, five rank and file positions, and three part-time positions. This brings the city to 30 full-time and seven part-time employees, which will work within the following departments. The city manager's office, administration, finance, human resources, community development, public works, and parks and recreation. And as you can see, that is our photo from our first ever Star Wars day that we had in our city. So um, one of the, also the achievements too that didn't mention in my script is that uh, one of the last things that uh, Mr. Egan was able to help with was we were able to raise the salary ta a table for our employees and that is our goal to uplift the employees through their salary and also um, uh, fill more vacancies. So that is our goal in the long term, and thank you again, Mr. Egan, for helping do that. And now to our finances. Now to the fun stuff. Our city wouldn't be able to function without money. The city's fiscal year 2021 to 2022 budget outlined the city's priorities and efforts to maintain the highest level of service possible. I'm pleased to report that the city was able to endure the negative effects of COVID-19 pandemic in large part due to the federal assistance we received. So thank you to your boss, <laughs> uh, Jacob. And our past practice of increasing reserves for emergencies over the last several years. Uh, the city's strategic use of applying this federal funding to offset costs otherwise covered by the city's general fund created more than a $3 million surplus. These funds allowed us to maintain the level of services, events and programming the community is accustomed to, make improvements to some areas such as law enforcement and facility maintenance. For instance, this action allowed us to take care of long overdue maintenance, repairs of the city parks and recreation facilities to ensure they remain in good condition for the public to enjoy. Although we accomplished a lot, we also continue to face some challenges mostly caused by the downturn in the economy and the worst inflation experienced in recent years. These included, these include unprecedented revenue loss, particularly from sales tax revenue, which is at a no to low property tax city affects us even greater, increased expenses, the city seeing an increase to the cost of contracted services, for instance, 
Um, I'm sorry, I'm looking your way <laughs> to the, the sheriffs. Our cost for our contracted service with the LA County uh, Sheriff's <laughs> Department increased by 1.45%. Careful review of our fiscal position also revealed a structural deficit for fiscal year 2022 to 2023, which amounts to about 3.9% of over general fund revenues. What that means is that there isn't just a deficit between revenue and expenditures, but also the level of staffing and funding resources needed to provide quality service to the community. To address this, we funded vacant positions for fiscal year 2022 to 2023 and continue to fund programs, events, and services the community has come to expect. This resulted in the adoption of the fiscal year 2022 to 2023 budget with the $450,000 deficit funded by the previous year's surplus. The city strongly believes that by exploring opportunities to create new revenue, continuing to seek grant funding for projects, and allocating the needed staffing levels, we will be better positioned to meet the needs of our community and close the deficit. We are hopeful for that. So, and moving on to public safety. Our commitment to maintaining the safety in Artesia as our top priority remains the same. Despite some of the fiscal challenges just mentioned, the City Council continues to allocate the majority of the funding to law enforcement to support crime prevention efforts and help combat crime in the community. Over $4 million was allocated to law enforcement last year, making it our largest budget expense. My colleagues and I continue to take action that enhance law enforcement operations in the city and support events or programs that encourage the public to partner with us to proactively address public safety issues. Some of our more, most significant actions over the last year include approval of 270,922 in annual funding for a dedicated sergeant for Artesia. We were the first city in LA County to adopt an ordinance that makes the possession of an uninstalled catalytic converter a violation in the city. After passing and enacting this ordinance, I sent a letter to all the cities in LA County and Orange County about the ordinance and dozens and dozens of cities have replicated that same. So thank you to the staff, especially Julie and Mike for leading that um, operation for us. Uh, <clears throat> and for something of that nature, for a candidate converter ordinance, and it came from the city attorney's office, um, an ordinance of that nature can only work if other cities have that as well. So it was a, it was a regional effort to do so and we have protected more people because of that. We also offered a free catalytic converter etching event in partnership with the LA County Sheriff's Department and also um, Pet Boys and offered the home security and alarm rebate program, which I believe just ended. Our continued efforts have provided positive results. Although cities in this region have experienced an increase in crime over the last year, including Artesia, our crime rate is 18% lower than what we experienced five years ago. We will continue our efforts to combat crime and keep Artesia safe. Now to our infrastructure. Another way we maintain safety in the community is through the improvement of our streets, roads, parks, and aging infrastructure. The city continually seeks grant funding to help fund these improvements. Over the last four years, the city received $9 million in grants, which help fund major projects such as the resurfacing of Arkansas Street and 168th Street, 169th Street from Pioneer Boulevard to the Eastern City Limit, the resurfacing of Elaine Avenue and Clarkdale Avenue from the 91 Freeway to the 166th Street, the repair of ramps and installation of the ADA sidewalk, the installation of a new traffic signal, signal which we're hoping to have at Pioneer Boulevard in Arkansas Street, which will be operational by the end of the year. This new traffic signal will not only improve the flow of traffic in the area of the city, but provides a safer route to children walking to the nearby school. In total, we upgraded traffic signals at 10 major intersections throughout the city to improve traffic circulation 
and provide safe access for pedestrians. We are also working on identifying sidewalk hazards and will address repairs on a cycle scheduled by districts starting this fall. To make our streets safer, we are working with, thank you, Southern California Edison to convert all our street lights to LED. We will begin this project next month. And that is huge for us to do as a city. By keeping our sidewalks roads safe, we hope to encourage the community to travel around the city by means other than by car, such as biking or walking. In fact, my colleagues and I recently adopted the Artesia Active Plan, Transportation Plan, ATP, which will serve as a guide for future infrastructure projects to work toward better connecting neighborhoods to parks, retail centers, public transit, without the use of cars. Now to economic development. We continue to make improvements in other areas as well in order to maintain a vibrant city. We work to market properties to revitalize our city, create more shopping and dining options in the community, as well as new housing. My colleagues and I approved the completion of an evaluation for the highest and best use of vacant and underutilized properties to consider all options, including mixed use development. In 2020, a couple years ago, we received a planning grant to create a citywide mixed use development overlay zone. Overlay zones provide incentives to developers who can bring economic development and new revenue to the city. Mixed use projects typically include retail, restaurant space on the ground floor and housing in the upper floors. In addition to bringing new businesses to the city, mixed use development would allow the city to address a substantial increase in housing requirements from the state. An upcoming exciting project development we approved this year is the Brandywine Homes. This project consists of 30 town home style condominiums on Artesia Boulevard. This project has already broken ground and construction is anticipated to be completed by fall 2023. This will bring life to the Artesia Boulevard corridor and we are hopeful what other exciting developments will come next. By now, I hope you know, Artesia is Fright's chicken city. <laughs> Does everyone know that yet? <laughs> and we have welcomed new restaurants such as Dave's Hot Chicken and Bonchon Chicken which came back to the region after the last 11 years. It used to be at Cerritos Mall. Um, also new to the city are Bopo Mofo Cafe, which is a very famous um, tea house that came from the San Diego Valley and by um, ce actually celebrities. Um, Neely's Neighborhood Burger Shop, uh, McKenney's Pernoy Pride, which I, they're here today, and, and many more. They are doing great business here in our city there are a few more upcoming restaurant openings to look forward to, including the California Bakehouse, which is located within the Pioneer Plaza Shopping Center, which is right next to Stater Brothers. We anticipate the grand opening to be coming soon. Raising Cane's, told you, Fried Chicken City, which will be located at the corner of Gridley Road and 186th Street. We anticipate they will open by next summer. We, also we are also happy to continue to support our businesses through the Small Business Assistance Program and Community Development Block Grant, which is CDBG funds authorized by the CARES Act. Just last week, we approved an issue funding for nine Artesia businesses for a total of $90,000. Five additional businesses will be approved for $10,000 each in funding from the program this year. That was big for our, our, our small businesses. Community programs and engagement. Uh, helping our businesses and succeed helps our, keep Artesia vibrant. In fact, our, our Artesia has been put on the map. This year alone, Artesia was featured in major news outlets such as ABC7, KTLA, and social media outlet Taco LA, and LA in a Minute. Such features piqued the interest of many, even outside of our city. That's big for our 17,000 uh, population. So thank you, Artesia, for, um, for uh, thank you to all those media outlets who featured us. Um, that is something that we've never had before. With all the new development and the new restaurants that are opening in the city, all the wonderful things, it is important 
that we continue to prioritize the preservation of the city's aesthetics, character, and quality of our neighborhoods. We do this through the code compliance. We also strive to quickly resolve reports of illegal dumping and graffiti, which diminish the appearance of our neighborhoods. To show our appreciation to our residents and businesses that do their part to keep Artesia looking great, we brought back the Beautification Awards program in the fall of 2021. We held the Spring Awards last year and will continue to hold it annually. This program allows us to recognize homeowners and businesses for their commitment to, beauty, to beautify Artesia and encourage others to do the same. These types of programs allow us to engage the community and connect with our residents. We support important programs for residents in partnership with organizations and businesses that will help sponsor some of the programs, which include the Summer Food Service Program, which provides a healthy breakfast and lunch while school is not in session. Over 4,000 meals were served in 2021. Project Joy Holiday Assistance Program, which provides food baskets to family in need during the holidays. 100 food baskets and 150 toys were distributed last year, and we are getting ready for this year. For our Thanksgiving um, food baskets, we are actually starting to give those away this Friday. Um, so if anyone wants to support those, please see our staff. Um, city Scholarship Program, we, uh, which awards scholarships to high school seniors planning to attend college or trade school. A total of 4,500 4, was awarded this past school year. Working together also allows us to bring you new pro programs, such as Restaurant Week, which we held with, with success for the first time earlier this spring. We had the participation of 15 restaurants and involvement of the community in supporting their local restaurants. This is a foodie town, so any of the restaurants and folks that are here, uh, we hope that you sign up and continue to support this uh, new program that we have. This program truly creates a win-win situation all around. Restaurants get more business, while consumers get to enjoy tasty meals at special rates oftentimes leading to the discovery of a new favorite restaurant. We are already seeking participating restaurants, hoping to expand that list even further. We also continue to work hard to enhance our recreational programming to encourage families to get active here in Artesia. We have a lot of participation in our recreation classes and continue to explore ways to grow these programs. We maintain robust sports programs which get a lot of interest in the community, which we love to see. Over the past year, we have also added more activities for our seniors to offer more opportunities for them to get involved. We always hope to have the opportunity to engage with all of you at our wonderful community events, which we continue to enhance. I have been pleased to see that more people are beginning to join our events as we re-emerge back to normal life from the pandemic. We just had a very successful ninth annual International Street Fair and Diversity Festival, which has garner, garnered in the past over 90,000 people. And it welcomed local residents and thousands of people from the surrounding area. We just also recently held the Halloween Spooktacular Trunk or Tree and are looking forward to the upcoming Winter Wonderland and tree lighting, which brings us all together to celebrate such a joyous time of the year. In closing, I'll end with this. As you can see, it has been a very busy year and a lot of progress has been made. We are on an upward trajectory and our brightest days are ahead of us. I am honored to serve as your mayor and take part in continuing to move Artesia in a positive direction. Thank you again for making time to join us this afternoon and for your commitment to the little but very mighty city of Artesia. Have a great rest of the afternoon and eat more food.